Yes, guys, what's happening? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another live stream. And it is deadline day and there is plenty going on as always. And with Chelsea, we've been probably one of the busier teams. Two names are through the door. Um, we're going to be covering that and much more ingoings, outgoings, the window itself in general, any breaking news that comes through whilst we are live. And I've got two great guests joining me to dissect all the action. Delight to be joined by Chelsea Database and Ollie Carpenter. Boys, thank you for coming. Um, lads, let's get straight into it. Um, Chelsea Database, I'll start with you, mate. Um, Chelsea's quest for a midfielder has now been complete. Dennis Zakaria is joining <laughs> from Juventus on loan, 25-year-old Swiss international. Um you know, only joined Juve not so long ago, I think last summer, actually, five, six million pounds from Much and Gladbach, where he was pretty decent. Um, it's not gone so well at Juve, but again, that's not an accurate representation of how good a player is. We've seen the likes of Kulusevski come to the Premier League and and, and do very well, having deemed, been deemed not really good enough for Juventus. Um, we tried for Edson Alvarez, there was links with Sangare. Um I mean, I'm, dis I'm disappointed that we've left it so late in the window to actually realise we needed a midfield player. But we've got our guy. Um, what, Chelsea, what, what do you think about him, mate? What are your thoughts on this Zakaria move? What kind of a profile is he? Is he similar to Kante? Is he similar to what we've got? Or is he something kind of completely different? Yeah, I mean, I mean I'll, I'll be first and foremost. I'll be honest and I'll say I've never watched this guy. But yeah. I, I have like quickly looked into his stats. And um, just by the looks of it, he's kind of like similar to Kante. Just in the way that he's he's able to like win the ball back uh, through like, interceptions, through just through his tackles, reading of the game. As well as that, he also likes to like kind of like drive forward with the ball, like just carry it, just to carry it forward. Sometimes, sometimes he finds himself ends up like ends up being in the box, and sometimes he ends up scoring as well. So his goals uh, statistic is a bit up there. Um, I've read, I've asked some people around as well, and um, because he was like, I think he was linked to United like a few years ago, mm. and people people talking were like saying when they watched him, he was like a Patrick Vieira or a Paul Pogba. So <laughs> I, I, I don't know if that's a good comparison or not, but yeah, that's what people are saying. Yeah, I mean, Ollie, what are your thoughts on this one, mate? Obviously, I know we like we got all all excited last night. I was well excited. Edson Alvarez, fifty million euros bid. Oh, he's <laughs> he's coming in. He's coming in. We're we, we're going to get him. Obviously, I think we've left we've left it so late to try and get a midfield player in. I'm, I'm by no means comparing Zakaria Zach, Zach, to to Saul in terms of ability or profile of player, but it very much feels like a Saul deal in terms of like we're desperate. We've left it way too late and we've kind of had to settle for someone well down the list who wasn't really part of the thinking at all. I mean, Demarzio reporting that actually Liverpool had also inquired about him before opting to go for Artur instead. Um, what are your feelings on Zakaria? Have you, have you watched much of him? Because for me, I think he was very good at much and glad back, but he's gone to Juve and he's not been terrible. He's had a few little niggling injuries here and there. He's obviously had the long-term knee injury that he's been recovering from that he had at Much and Gladbach. I mean, a loan deal with a 30 million option to buy, which isn't mandatory, potential five-year contract. I mean, what I would say is that it ticks the boxes in terms of we get a midfield player into the squad, which we desperately need. And with it only being a loan deal, it is very much risk-free. But I mean, what are your thoughts on Zakaria as a as a player? And, you know, how, how do you see, I mean, what, what are your thoughts on the deal as well? Do you think it makes sense? Yeah, I do, uh, especially considering sort of like how much time there actually is left in the window. I think looking in order to, you know, look, I think Boli and Co looking to get a cert, like some major transfer business done uh, was always going to be unlikely with so little time left in the window. Um, and so I think Zakaria is not a bad shout. Um, I think it sort of came out of left field a bit and they we're all a bit shocked and we're not really sure like how to feel about it necessarily. And a lot of people, including myself, haven't seen him play that much. From what I've read, he seems like a true DM, which is what we need. Um, and, you know, so it certainly plugs a, a hole in the uh, in in midfield for a, for a season, which is desperately what we require at the moment in terms of uh, our priorities as a team. It seems, you know, and like you say, it, it seems like a decent enough move. It's relatively risk-free. It's only an option to buy. It's not an obligation. If he's good, we get him for 30 million, which would be a bargain in today's market, you know. And I was thinking about this earlier as well. And the, the actual, the chances of us getting rice next window in the next summer are very high, right? Uh, are very high for at least going for him. And I was wondering if the Sagaria move to sort of uh blocks him in blocks him in from coming that move but actually considering that Kante's out of contract next summer I think Jorginho is out yeah, of contract next are. summer as well um so at least one of them 
two are going to leave at least, if not both of them. So I don't think it, I think it's, uh, you know, it, it's a good chance to, to plan for the future if it works. And that is a big if, because we've all seen, you know, apparently he's got like a few injury problems and things like that. I personally don't think it's quite as bad as people have made it out to be. He had a big injury at Gladbach and then he's had COVID a couple times and he's had little knocks and strains and things like that. I think Alvarez probably would have been the better player. But I don't think that um, Ajax were willing to budge on him. And so, like, yeah, I think it, it's really hard to it's it's hard to go wrong, you know. Oh, even even Sal uh, on loan last season, which we all kind of agree was a bit of a mistake. He did OK. You know, he did all right. He plugged a gap when he needed to. And that was it, really. And, uh, you, you know, um, it's it's decent for a short term solution. It's quite similar to the Aubameyang situation, in my view, where like I feel like he'll come in and he'll either do really well and he'll do a job, or he won't. And before we know it, he'll be gone anyway. Yeah, I think I think that's a fair point. I mean, obviously, it'll be interesting to see how he does. But the main thing is it's risk free. We're not really tied into any any deal or and and, and you know what he provides cover in there. And if he turns out really good, we can get a player for 30 million next summer for a holding midfield kind of player, which is virtually peanuts in this market for someone half decent. So I think there's potential big upsides to this and very few downsides because if he's crap, then we just send him back at the end of the season. So I think, I think it works quite well. But I mean, Chelsea database, we, we were excited about Alvarez last night. Um, How disappointed are you that Alvarez or Sangare hasn't really materialised? Because it would have been a lot better to get one of them, wouldn't it? Um, yeah, I, I think I would prefer um, Alvarez out of the two, um, just because he's, he's, he's just he's a lot more of a holding midfielder. I kind of just like just sits in like in front of the defense and kind of just, like passes it around, um, and then just like breaks up the play. Um, whereas like Sangari is kind of like he's, he's, he's a similar player, but he's also he likes to go forward as well, like as Zakaria. And um, I feel like if we want to move forward. Um, I feel like we need a holding midfielder just so we can play like maybe like a free in the midfield, and then we we can't we don't have to keep using this double pivot thing in the middle. Um, I'm not a really big fan of that, but um, yeah. I mean, mate, do you think this would Charles Do you think this would signal a switch of formation, or do you just think it's very much he's just going to be an extra body and he'll just play alongside someone in in the two sixes, or do you think Zakaria coming could actually mean a switch in formation because? I think with the, the the signings we've made this summer in terms of defensively, it's very much with a three in the back in mind, isn't it? So I I, I would imagine that he's just going to come in and play as one of the as one of the sixes in the pivot because with the signings we've made, it, it doesn't indicate a switch to a four at the moment. Yeah, yeah, I I, I think the three at the back is staying uh, as long as like Silver's still here. Um, so yeah, I think he just slots into that like one of the six roles. Um, I think I think he actually suits that a lot better than being a holding midfielder and like a four three three. Um, yeah, um, I think uh, at the very least it, it gives Tuchel that option to actually switch. We saw what happened when we tried to go to a, a, a back four against um, against Southampton. Yeah, yeah, and, and it didn't really go well, and we were sort of run off the park in the second half, especially. Um, so I think the thing is, I don't know if Zakaria would play all the time, or just some of the time, or, or barely ever. Or, but I feel like at the very least he gives Tuchel that sort of flexibility that we know he likes in a player to uh, to be able to sort of switch things up, change formation, even during mid games. You know, like even during games, we'll be able to switch things around, change the formation if things aren't working. So, you know, I, I feel like for that reason alone, it seems to be. Uh, but let's be honest, that would have been true regardless of which DM we brought in today. So I think you know the fact that we brought in a midfielder is almost more important than who it is. Yeah, no, no, for sure. I mean, I don't know about you, lads, but I'm just, I'm glad we've got someone in the midfield, but I'm almost, I'm a bit annoyed at the same time that it's come to like a deadline day scramble. I mean, I know we had other areas that we, that we needed to address in, in, in the score. We had to rebuild the defence. That was a main priority. And we probably needed to get a couple of forward players in considering the ones that really wanted out. But it's annoying because I feel we could have barred Declan Rice this window. I think we virtually could have got anyone in holding midfield and, you know, we could have definitely, if we tried a little bit earlier, we could have definitely got Sangare because he's he literally signed a new extent, a new contract at PSV uh, in in the summer. And I think we could have definitely got Edson Alvarez as well. But you know, Ajax are a selling club, but they're not going to sell virtually their whole team, and they're certainly not going to sell one of their best players with with like one day left in the window with no time to get a replacement. I mean, Chelsea database, are you a little bit frustrated that 
we haven't tried to prioritise a midfield player earlier, even though it was blatantly obvious we needed one. And whilst Zakaria could turn out to be all right, I mean, it's for me, it's just frustrating because I feel that, as I said, we could have got, we definitely could have got Alvarez done earlier if he was a priority target. Um, or we could have virtually got anyone in holding midfield. So do you share those kind of disappointment that in terms of a holding midfield player that we could have actually moved earlier and got someone decent in? Yeah, I mean, especially now when you look at it, um, we had like, you know, Kovacic is not obviously fit yet and he's also injury-prone, Kante's injured. Um, we obviously need a midfielder now. And I think the way, I think I think why Tuchel didn't prioritise it so early on was he he, he, did, he wasn't obviously expecting such injuries, like straight away. Mm. So he's obviously thinking that obviously um, Jorginho, Kante, Kovacic, that's fine as it is. Um, you know, three midfielders um, for those two midfield slots, that should be fine. But obviously, we, we've, we've, he hasn't thought about the fact that Kante is injury prone, Kovacic is injury prone, and Jorginho isn't good enough at all. So, and then now it's 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 too late now, and we're now just panic buying. Like it doesn't matter if it's a good player; it's still a panic buy. Um, but yeah, it's just it is what it is. Yeah, no, it, it is what it is, and you know. We, we, the midfield's there now. And, and I mean, Oli, what do you think of the midfield options we've got now? Obviously, we've got Jorginho, Kovacic, Kante, Loftus-Cheek, Gallagher, and now Zakaria. I mean, for this for the season, I know we know that Kante and Kovacic are quite injury prone. So they'll be missing for parts. Obviously, players could pick up injuries and, and, and whatnot like, like normal. But I mean, out of those six, I mean, you're quite happy with that pool of midfield players we've got there, the six, the six players? Or, I mean, what, what are your thoughts going into the season with that? I'm reasonably happy. Um, I'm not as pleased um, as I was at the start of the day with our midfield options, um, a- apart from Sanz and Zakaria. So, you know, uh, but uh, seeing Ampadu and Gilmore go, um, I know Ampadu is just alone, but Gilmore's going to Brighton on permanent for nine million. Um, it seems like you really, uh, we're really making uh, ourselves in midfield, especially defensive midfield, quite thin. Um, I feel like Ampadu probably had the had the stuff to be able to fill in at, at DM when he wanted to, you know, if we if anyone ever needed a rest or anything like that and Zakaria maybe was injured or or anything like that. But now we kind of don't have that safety net. What it does do is allows us to actually get a bit more out of the players that we do have. Um so if you have Zakaria, you know, in the midfield it's sitting and, and screening the back four. We, we well, first of all, we can switch to a back four. We and then we have Zakaria, sc- Zakaria screen the back four, and then that allows us to play with uh, two more attack-minded players in midfield. Could be Mount Gallagher, could be anybody. Um, you know, it's people who are not who are not playing in their current uh, best positions at the moment, who hopefully will be. And and that will actually allow us to get an extra man up the pitch. Um, we, you know, and we we've been saying for ages about how a switch to four at the back is important so we can get that extra player up the pitch and actually bury and create more chances. Um, and it's just, I don't know, it seems like it's its a good idea to have that depth in midfield, but um, I think over everything, I think Tuchel actually values versatility. Um, and I, so I think really it's going to be about how these players can fit in multiple systems. That's why he likes Mount. That's why he likes Gallagher. Yeah. That's why he really likes Loftus Cheek, Reese James, players who can play and Havertz, players who can play in multiple positions, even multiple positions in one game. You know, all, all of our forward players all play across the front line. None of them really stick to, uh, you know, the centre or whichever wing they're supposed to be on. And we'll expect of Bamiang, I'm sure, to do the same. So I think ultimately it's more about the versatility than it is about the depth. Um, but obviously that depth allows you to be more versatile. So we'll see. Yeah, no, we, we definitely will see. I mean, Chelsea database, you, you were saying that um, obviously he's a carrier and can take kind of similar stats wise in what you were looking at. Having said that, would you then expect with both of them fit that it would be unlikely they would both start together? Or do you think there's a, there's a chance that playing both of them together in, in the double pivot could work? Um, yeah, I could see it working. It'd be a very defensive midfield, but um, it, we can just have like everyone fly forward, I suppose, and then this, those two kind of like. In my uh, head, that's like playing. Yeah. In my head, that's <laughs> like playing Mikel and Ramirez. You know, in a double pivot, like it's that yeah. kind of thing where, like, yeah, that they you know you can get everyone else forward, but they're not. They're going to be doing the bulk of the work of the dirty work, screening the back four. But hopefully, Zakaria is good enough by himself, so uh, you know he's able to sort of screen that back four with help from, fair, from the actual think... back line. 
I think he'll get a lot of minutes as well because we know how injury prone Kante and Kovacic are. We've got five subs. We're going to be playing a lot of games. So I think he will get a fair, a fair few minutes. But I mean, it's obviously good that he can play like he can play central midfield as well. He can play holding midfield. He can obviously play um, centre back as well uh, in an emergency. I know we don't really need cover in centre back, but yeah, guys, moving on, moving on from midfield. Um, Chelsea database. We have finally completed what's been a long drawn out transfer. Pierre Emerick Aubameyang has finally joined, not officially yet, but he's in London. He's at Cobham doing whatever he's doing there. But he's joined Marcus Alonso going to Barcelona as part of the deal, plus 14 million euros. Um, what was first of all, mate? What, what are your thoughts on Aubameyang? Obviously, 33 years old. Um, he's been around the block. You could say he's done very well in the Premier League before. Two golden boots at Arsenal, back-to-back -back seasons with 20-plus goals. No Thomas Tuchel very well from our time at Dortmund together. Tuchel really wanted him. This is Tuchel's guy. Um, how do you see this working out, mate? And what if, if you've looked into any stats, what can you sort of tell us about Aubameyang in terms of potentially how he might slot into this front line? Um, I, 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 I saw like a I saw someone tweet out a stat where his conversion rate is actually declining. So that's oh, obviously not a good stuff. Perfect. Not... <laughs> <laughs> given, uh, but, given the number nine shirt and we're sorted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the curse, yeah. Um, no, but he's uh, he obviously knows the league. Uh, he knows two called the other system. So he's obviously not going to uh, find it hard to, you know, settle in. So he should be able to hit the ground running. Uh, but obviously he had a little incident with the, like a robbery thing. So he's, yeah, so, oh, he's uh, out for a month. Yeah. Yeah, so we won't be able to see him till like October. So, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. that's one of the for me that's one of the big drawbacks. I mean, there's I'm just on Twitter now, and there's pictures of Abamyang speaking to one of the Sky Sports reporters. He's just got out of the car in London, and his first words were, "I'm back." So, I mean, I think there's a point <laughs> to prove. I think he'll be obviously he's a bit of a character, and I think he'll be annoyed with how things ended at Arsenal and how it was. How, how he was portrayed as the bad guy and whatnot. Yeah. So I think he's, there's definitely a point to prove there. But Ollie, in terms of this deal itself, it's, I'm glad it's done because it's been dragging on for weeks and weeks. Um, Marcus Alonso going the other way as part of it, I think it's great, works well for both parties. Alonso didn't want to be here anymore. I think in time, it naturally come to the end of part ways. And to reduce the fee and get a Bamiang in, I think, again, like we were saying to Zakaria, a Bamiang, pretty risk-free, 14 million euros, which is not a lot of money in, in football terms for someone of his caliber i suppose i know he's 33 now and he's getting on a little bit two year contracts plus optional but for a third based on percentages percentage of appearances in the second year i mean for me this again comes under risk free but what i would say is tuchel's got to make this work because this is the guy that he desperately wanted so there's going to be pressure on him to get this to work but i mean what, what do you think of the abamyang signing how do you see him fitting in it Charles? because there'll definitely be a point to prove and if we can provide him the service he is very good at finishing, despite his potential conversion stats falling slightly. He has scored goals everywhere, even at Barcelona. You know, he still scored, I think, 11 goals in, in like 15, 16 games when he went there last season in January. So he, he can do it. I mean, what, what, what are your thoughts on this transfer? Are you happy with it? Yeah, I am reasonably happy with it. I sort of flip-flopped back and forth on it when it was actually sort of in the making. And it has been for over a month, I think. But um I, th I am reasonably happy with it, actually. Um, you know, outside of the fact that we won't get to see him play immediately, that is a drawback, um, you know, and it's horrible what happened to him. And, we, you know, we hope he's doing well and recovering all right and his family are OK. Um, but I think that he, you know, if anyone is going to score goals for us, for Tuchel, it's Aubameyang. Because he has done before and hopefully he will again. You know, it... The, he's the best option at this point to actually get goals out of this team um, in, in my view because of you know the chemistry he already has with Tuchel there shouldn't be too much of a uh, a bedding in process because he knows the league and he knows Tuchel he should be more or less ready to go the second he's fit enough so you know that that's important you know there's no sort of learning the system or anything like that or trying to adapt to the system he should be ready to go and as a professional you know I'm sure he will be ready to go um, so hopefully uh, you know and the other thing is, is he does bring guaranteed goals. And he did for Arsenal and he did for Barcelona and he yeah. did for Dortmund. And so he will for us. Um, and what Chelsea actually do lack in a lot of our games that we play is goals. And that, that's the, the sad matter of it, whether that's from the lack of a creator in some people's view, whether that's the lack of a DM allowing more players to push forward in other people's view, or an out-and-out -out number nine who's able to actually put the ball in the onion bag, you know? like, And it's solving that 
part of it at the very least. You know, we've got an actual someone who knows how to put the ball in the net. And that can't really be understated because even if he's having a bad game, he knows where the goal is. So he'll be able to get one or two. Or, and that's really invaluable for us this season because we're going to yeah. need it. I mean, obviously, if Amiens come in, we know in his, perhaps when he was a bit, like in his younger days, he was very much able to play down the middle, play off either side as well. Um, Chelsea Database, are you very much expecting him to solely play down the middle or do you think we could see him down the left or down the right flank potentially as well? I mean, for me, I think at 33 years of age now, I'd probably rather see him solely down the middle. Um, but, I mean, do you expect him to start most weeks, mate? Do you think he'll be used in a variety of positions across the front line? I mean, how, how do you see him fitting in? Um, because we're, we're playing like this, like three five two. I, I kind of see him like in that front two, like maybe I so think, you like think Sterling, him, him and Sterling with Havertz yeah. to kind of miss out. Yeah, or possibly, out, uh, possibly him like, and yeah. Havertz. You know, yeah, with Havertz both. playing as the second striker, which we know is where he was playing best at Leverkusen as well. So yeah. again, it's that versatility. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. I mean, do you, yeah, just do you think like? I mean, obviously, do you think him coming in could actually potentially maybe help Kai Havertz? Um, yeah, I, I, I see that. He's, he's, he's obviously an experienced player, an experienced goal scorer, uh, more importantly. Um, so, obviously, in training, he'll be able to you know, show Havertz how to shoot, shoot the ball. Um, <laughs> and, yeah, and, and obviously, obviously uh, Aubameyang's movement is also, also very good. Um, mm. He could also just help out with that as well. Yeah, no, d d definitely, mate. I mean... I mean, how much pressure do you think is on Tuchel, though, that Chelsea out of base? Because, obviously, this is the guy that he's wanted. The, the track record of centre-forwards coming into Chelsea, bar Drogba and Costa, has been absolutely abysmal. So we need to make sure that we don't give him the number nine shirt. But how much pressure do you think is on the, on the manager at the moment uh, to, to get Aubameyang to work? Because if it doesn't work or he can't get him to work, it is solely on Tuchel. And he'll come under a lot of pressure, a lot of criticism if this signing doesn't work out. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's his signing for sure. I mean, I'm not... I wasn't a big fan of uh, of this link at the start, and obviously I'm just gonna have to back the manager on this one. Um, you know, he obviously knows the player. He he he. he um, hopefully he can get him to work. Um, it, sh it shouldn't be that hard. I mean, we've we've seen what Aubameyang can do. It's just the only worry that we all have is obviously his age. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I think I think there'll be a lot of pressure pressure on him, especially into getting to top four. I mean, we're spending like what over 250 million. This window, yeah. If we don't get top four, you know, there's going to be some, uh, um, yeah, some there's, going to be some, there's going to be some serious yeah. conversations to be had. I mean, I'm just trying to find something now. Um, moving away from a Bamiang, um, onto Memphis to Pi. Now, yes, uh, I've just uh, seen uh, that people are saying, saying something on, big is happening. Yeah, for people close mm. to Memphis, I'm trying to find the page. I mean, I, I won't, um, I don't know if I can find it now. Uh, mm. it's gone. Uh, I did have it somewhere. Um, oh, yeah, this is it here. Let me bring it up now. Um, that Fabrizio Romano on his Twitch stream is saying that um, people close to uh, to, um, to Depay are saying that something big is coming. Now, what do we reckon that could be, boys? Are we thinking, do we think that means Depay is coming to Chelsea? I mean, Ollie, what, would your, what are your thoughts on Memphis Depay? And would him coming to Chelsea make sense? It would, I think there would be no fee because it would be a termination of his contract. Do you think he ticks the boxes? I think he's a very talented player, a lot more mature than he was in his Manchester United days. He's developed a lot as a player. He's very skillful. He's got good finishing ability as well. The fact that we've lost Lukaku, we've lost Werner, hudson odoi has gone on loan. Um, it looks like Ziyech and Pulisic will both stay, but we could probably do with an extra option up there. Um, Memphis Depay ticking boxes for you? Uh, absolutely. I, I think he's a, he's a phenomenal player. Uh, he can play anywhere across the front three, which again is important based on the way that we play. Um, seems to, you know, score goals more or less everywhere he's gone. Uh, you know, seems to be quite a, a good professional. Is a really creative player, can link up the play really well, which is what we need in that sort of, in that attacking phase. Because sometimes I think we, we feel that sometimes our, our attacking players don't always have the best decision making. Uh, you know, whether to shoot or to pass. Depay will absolutely solve that, no problems, um, in my view, because, you know, he's just got the pedigree. Um, I, I, In my view, I think it'd be impossible to, for that to go wrong, especially considering there would be no fee. Um, so if we're learning that, you know, something potentially big is happening that could involve Memphis Depay uh, possibly coming to us, that'd be, that'd 
that'd be a really big signing for us. And I'd, uh, I'd I mean, I think I've seen somewhere on Twitter, I think it's from a Spanish outlet, some random one. I don't know how accurate it is, but apparently he would sign, he could potentially sign a, a one year deal at, at Chelsea. I don't really know how true that is, but I mean, Chelsea database is it just would the pie excite you? Is that something you would you'd be, you'd be fully behind? Do you think he'd fit in well? Yeah, he's uh, I think it's, it's it's a creator in the attack, which obviously is something that we lack right now. Um, we don't actually have anyone in that front three that can create. Um, maybe Sterling, but I, I'd rather him as the goal scorer. So mm. if I, I think the pie kind of slots in probably on the, probably in the, like, mm, if you go for like a 3 5 2, I think he kind of like slots in like behind like the two strikers of like Sterling and the Bob Yang. Or he can kind of like be in those like wider like 10 roles, maybe like on the left or on the right, where he kind of like drops it deeper and then links up the play and then creates from there. So yeah, I can, I can see a lot of positions where he could play. Yeah, no, there's, there certainly could be. I mean, I mean, I, I would love one more signing. I feel, I feel we could probably do with one more attacking signing. I mean, I don't know what Abamyang coming in and potentially Depay coming in as well uh, mean, means for the, means for the future of Armando Broja. I think he that obviously pushes his minutes down. But I mean, Oli, do you I mean do you think Chelsea are seriously looking at looking at Depay? I mean, because he, uh, he was meant to join Juventus and that fell through. And now, I mean, I've seen things that potentially a Premier League club is interested in him. I mean, I'm not, I mean, it could. There's obviously a few other teams it could be, but this is very much sort of got got Chelsea written all all over, it, hasn't it? I could definitely see it happening, um, especially considering you know the position we're in. We've uh, you know when you think about it, we've lost three forwards and we're we're only bringing one in so far in Aubameyang. Mm-hmm. So we kind of actually do need to replace one of them. You know, I guess um, Aubameyang comes in to replace Lukaku in a sense. Um, yeah. And you know, and uh, Depay would come in to replace Werner, I suppose. But yeah, I think I think it seems like a good signing. Um, I think again, it's just so risk free. It you know, like I, I I see people in the chat saying you know he's not Chelsea level or he's he's not quite you know he's he's not quite at the level uh, for Chelsea. But I think you'd be surprised. Um, you know, I think he's actually a very solid player. Um, I think a lot of people would like to see Broya get his chances, and I completely mm. agree with that. But Depay is a completely different kind of player. You know, he's not really an out-and-out striker number nine like Broya is. He he's more there to link up the play in the attack and well, play he's anywhere across the again, front line. Again, it takes again, those that, versatile boxes. That's the thing, you know. So we we you know we're seeing a lot of things happen, and, and I wouldn't rule it out at all. Uh, I wouldn't rule it out at all. You know, we we've, we've seen lots of lots of things that have been quite surprising today. You know, from the Chelsea side, we've even seen uh, you know uh, Tyler Dibbling, who we signed um, only in the summer, young sixteen gone year old player, gone straight back to Southampton. You know, I don't think he settled well, um, so he's gone straight back. You know, Billy Gilmore leaving for only nine million that was quite a shock as well. So I mm. I don't see why it couldn't happen. I really don't. Yeah, no, I, I don't. I don't see why why it couldn't happen either. I, I think I think Depay is a good player. I know people in the chat not not so convinced on it, but um, I mean, I, I think again, I think it would be risk free. There's no transfer fee, and if it was like a two year deal or something, I think this is just risk free. Really, is it exactly. the most exciting? Perhaps not. But I mean, Chelsea database Depay. I mean, do you think you could see him forming a decent front two with a Bamiang, or do you think we could have a Depay, a Bamiang, Sterling? I mean, how, yeah. how much would that excite you? That, that that'd be pretty decent. Yeah, I think I think it, it'd be good, it'd be good for now for sure. Um, obviously, like in the long term, we'll obviously, you know, when we get the director of football in, and then we obviously target the right attacking players, so we don't make any more mistakes um, in signing attacking players that flop. Um, so it's it's obviously a player that's versatile. Um, he can play in different tactical setups that Tuchel likes to do. Um, He's not really a goal scorer, but he's more of a creator. So it's kind of like a different sort of um, forward style. Um, it, it, it'll be an interesting one to see, uh, and uh, like how he all fits in, um, and then like as well as like everyone else around him. Like where does what happens to Pulisic? What happens to Ziyech? You know, Broja, Havertz. You know, um, we have to see. Uh, you're muted. Yeah, but I just want to quickly, before we stick with the attackers, I just want to quickly bring this up about some holding midfield players. Uh, Rob saying, Rob Prattley, who's, done, who's been doing good stuff in this window on Twitter, he's saying here that Zakaria was recommended to the club by an ex-player who scouts for us. He was third choice behind Chouameni and Alvarez, but ahead of Sangare, who was viewed as too raw. So, I mean... Uh, I don't know. Is that, I, I mean, I don't know how important that information really is, but yeah, I mean, who is the next hey, player who scouts for us? 
Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure. I mean, I'm sure. Oh, no joke, mate. I actually think Ross Turnbull's a Chelsea scout. Oh, yeah, it might real. be him. Who knows? No, for, for, for real, he actually is. I mean, I, I hope his scouting's better than his goalkeeping. But I mean, that man probably... has a Champions League medal, you know. If he didn't play any minutes, did he? <laughs> 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 he, did, he, he, he played. He played no minutes. But I mean, boys, I think the D- pie, uh, Bamiang, and obviously uh, uh, Zakaria. That would be those would be the three. Obviously, it's going to be two. Um, I wanted I wanted to take it on to it outgoings. Now, obviously, Choseves, we had a lot of players to get out, and you know, we've seen the likes of Marcus Alonso be moved on. Michi Batshu, I think, is about to join Nottingham Forest on loan. We've managed to ship out, we've got rid of Ross Barkley, um, to name a few. I mean, there's loads that have gone out. I mean, I can't list them all uh off the top of my head, but how, impre- cause how impressed have you been with the way that Todd Bowie's gone about business in getting a lot of these Deadwood players out of the club? I mean, that, that, that's, got, that's, a massive, that's a massive thing as well, isn't it? Yeah. Well, he's, he's, oh, no, you go, Chelsea, uh, you go. It's all right. Uh, it, I thought he was talking to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> good. Go. Yeah, no, you go, yeah. mate. It's cool. That's okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I mean, I think, you know, Todd Bowie's obviously thinking of, like, the future of the club. Like, obviously, if this was Marino, she would probably, like, loan them out again. Um, but obviously, uh, Todd... T- <laughs> Todd Bowley, obviously, you know, he knows that these sort of players, they don't have a future here. Like, there's no point of them being here. So you might as well just have, like, a um, like a whole, uh, like, um, what's the word? Fires. Uh, re, like, re, I guess it's like a regroup, isn't it, I guess? Yeah, kind of like, um, yeah, just just get, like, the, like, like the structure of the squad. It. Yeah, yeah. Like, get, like this, yeah, get the structure of the squad uh, sorted. So then, um, like, in, in, in the future... We don't have any of these deadwood um, hanging around, you know, taking up the wage bill. Um, yeah, yeah. No, I think it's I think it's a good thing. I mean, Ollie, we we know like having seen the squad over the years that there's a lot of players in there surplus to requirements that we've needed to move on that should have been moved on years ago. How pleased are you to see that this summer? I know we've not quite dealt with them all, but a large majority of players that needed to be moved on have pretty much been moved on. How how important was that for you at the start of the window? And how pleased are you to see it that the club are getting players out that, that are surplus to requirements and, and, and don't want to be here? It's really important because it's um, you know, it, it it was one of the top priorities, I'm sure, uh, when Bowley came in in terms of like looking at the squad and seeing what Tuchel needed. Um, you know, getting rid of the Deadwood was was absolutely vital to both free up, you know, wages and also, you know, help free up squad positions as well. You know, and, and the way I look at it is like Bowley is is very much a businessman in the world of sport. You know, he is a you know he is a sports fan, but he's also really a businessman, and that's where he shines the most. Um, mm-hmm. And viewing the current Chelsea crop of Deadwood that we had, it was just a you know a set of depreciating assets that were that weren't going to ever improve. Now, what Chelsea would have used to have done is is like Chelsea database said, they all probably would have gone on loan until their contracts run out and we would have just let them go for free. And Bowley said, no, let's actually get rid of them now, cut our losses and make it so we actually can can sign the assets that we want to bring in. You know, it probably helps a little bit that they're actually they're from the previous sort of tenure and the previous ownership. Maybe if they were under his own ownership, maybe it's, you know, he's going to be a little bit more careful because, you know, he spent money on it. Mm. Whereas the players who are Deadwood currently, he hasn't spent any money on them. So, but either way, getting rid of them, whatever his reasoning, uh, has been absolutely fantastic. And next season, we'll probably see the vast majority of the rest of them gone, um, especially in terms of the fact that you've got lots of players who run out of their contracts in 2023. It's going to be really, really interesting season for Chelsea this season to see who actually get signs a new contract and who doesn't. You know, we've got, like we say, Kante and Jorginho out of contract. Out of we contract, have a, yeah. But we've got a whole host of other players who are either out of contract or coming into a year or two years into that until their uh, contract ends. So, and you know, we're looking for uh, making new deals with Reese and Mason as well. So, there's going to be a lot of tr- uh, contract talk this season, I believe. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, in terms of Bakayoko, he is on a two-year loan at AC Milan. Uh, they, they're trying to get, they're trying to terminate his second year. He obviously rejected a loan move to Monza, who have just been. Uh, promoted to Serie A. So, yes, um, Bakayoko is currently at AC Milan online. I mean, Chelsea database, the one one outgoing that is kind of dividing the fan base, Billy Gilmore, um, talented boy. He's done well at Chelsea in moments. I mean, he's done, he done well under Frank Lampard. I remember a game against Liverpool where he came in and was and was man of the match on his debut. He's had a couple of man of the match performances for Chelsea. 
I think what's really done it for him is that loan spell to Norwich kind of ruined him. Um, it just it just didn't work out at all. And he looks like he's pretty much, it's not officially confirmed, but he's going to be on his way to Brighton for £9 million. I mean, people are annoyed because we haven't, we haven't got another midfield player in yet, but we have now got another one in. I mean, how do you feel about Billy Gilmore leaving? Um, I'm not 50-50. Like, obviously, I'm sad that he's going. I know that he's a, he's a top-quality talent. I rated him um, you know, when he when he played for Lampard. He made his debut and he got the man of the match. You know, he was fantastic then. Um, he, had, he had a poor loan at Norwich. Probably wasn't the best place to go for him. Um, I think the club could have probably made a better decision on where he could, could have gone, but uh, it is what it is. But um, I, I also don't think he suits like Tuchel in what he wants to do because I think Tuchel wants like a physical, uh, it's like sentimental physical players, and obviously Gilmore isn't that. Um, and, and you know we're seeing the players that we're linked to in like, in terms of like the midfielders. You know, they're all physical players. You know, Zakaria, Alvarez, Sangare, um, they're all physical players. Um, even like the centre backs that we're trying to get in. Um, so he's, he's obviously, he's, you know, Tuchel's obviously got a, like a vision in what he wants to do with the team. And unfortunately, you know, Billy Gilmore is not part of that. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. I mean, I'm not disputing that Gilmore's not talented, but I think at the end of the day, like if you're good enough, you'll get opportunities. Um, and there's also the fact that if the manager doesn't fancy you, then he doesn't fancy you. And it's kind of best for both parties to, to go well, separate ways. Th- that's the thing as well is, is, yeah. You know, those two things aren't necessarily mutually exclusive. You know, you no. can be good enough and the manager doesn't fancy you. Yeah. We all we all know what Gilmore was capable of. Four back to back man of the matches in his first four games in all competitions for us. You know, that is an unbelievable legacy to start with as your Chelsea tenure. And so in a sense, his his ceiling has always been viewed as being very high, but you know, like we know, the, the the loan to Norwich did him absolutely zero favours and he's found himself out of favour um in the Chelsea squad. So I don't know if I was Gilmore, I probably would have left as well. I mean, how how, how do you see Ollie? How do you see him doing at a club like Brighton, playing for someone like Graham Potter, a very good manager? Do you think he's fit into that midfield well alongside Moises Caicedo and and, and others in there? Absolutely, no doubt. Absolutely, yeah. no doubt. He, uh, in my view, Billy Gilmore is going to fry the league under uh, under Bright under Graham Potter at Brighton. He's going to be doing a really really good job there, playing exactly that sort of attacking football that we thought he was going to be playing at Norwich on loan. You know, uh, where he's able to have a bit of time on the ball, pick passes, things like that. You know, what he's really good at. Uh, you know, it's just a shame that we couldn't find a place for him at Chelsea because he plays more or less exactly the same role that Jorginho plays, but he um, he's a little bit more energetic in the midfield uh, and can make a tackle properly. So when you look at it like that, you, you sort of go, oh, you know, why have we let him go? But ultimately, if the player wants to go, you have to kind of let them because otherwise they're not going to perform and they're not going to play. Yeah, just a quick update on... Uh... On um on Depay, by the way, from Rashid Rahman and Gerard Romero, they're kind of two top Barcelona sources. An intermediary that was involved in the Uber operation is also working on Memphis to Chelsea. So I mean, I don't know, read into that what you what you will. But I mean, also it looks like Ethan Ampadu has gone out on loan as well. I mean, Chelsea database is talk talking preseason, mate, that Ampadu could be a good option to have versatility. He's done well on multiple loans. Um it's, I'm very clear that he's kind of surplus to requirements. I mean, there's no buy option on his loan to Spezia. I mean, how surprised are you that there's like Chelsea is still wanting to hang on to him? Um, there's obviously you know, talent there. I thought he was actually, you know, he did pretty well in preseason. And even Tuchel said it himself, and when when he when he was on the field and he had the ball, he was you know p- uh, putting passes forward, he was progressing the ball. Um, so I thought he was uh, he did well, um, but he didn't really get another chance after that. Um, you know, because we we saw him play Ross Barkley and then all and all the other yeah. devils trying to advertise it to other clubs trying to um, sell them. But um, yeah, I mean, alone alone's fine as, as long as we don't sell him. I think to be fair, I I, I would have thought he would have been a good like squad player to have this uh, season, especially because he can play like that DM role. And obviously, we don't actually have that sort of player now. I, I mean, I know that we brought in Zakaria, but if Zakaria gets injured, uh, who else are we gonna play? We can't play Georgina because he's crap. No, so. You know, I would have thought, you know, maybe Ampadu can have a good run in like the Carabao Cup games, the FA Cup games. Yeah. But um, yeah. Boys, just another quick update on Depay. Nathan Gissing now, who's pretty reliable Chelsea source, can confirm that he can confirm that story that I just read out. And I understand Memphis Depay is keen on a move to Chelsea. So big things, big things happening. Big, mate, mm. think, as, as our great friend Gerard Romero said, things are happening. 
and our, our good friend as well, uh, Rob. I think his name is JP yeah. Our Journalism or, or yeah. our JP Journalism. Is yeah, something mate. can be done. Something you know? can be done. You know, things are happening. <laughs> Memphis Depay to Chelsea could be heating up, boys. I mean, I'm not going to be here till deadline day closes, but who knows, guys? Come 11 o'clock, this, this could be a possibility that Memphis Depay is potentially getting closer. I mean, Ollie, just back to, to Ampadu. Um, what are your thoughts? Kind of echoing what Chelsea Database was saying that, you know, it's strange yeah, that he I, didn't really get more of a chance, more of a chance I mean, to, to show what he can still do. Going out, I mean, like he's only going out on loan again. He's going to come yeah. back because there's no obligation or even an option to buy, I don't believe, um, for him at Venezia. Uh, oh, sorry, Spezia. Spezia, um, yeah. Uh, so he's going to be doing, a, you know, he's going to be more or less doing exactly the same thing he was doing last season. Um, and I know he didn't necessarily want to go out on loan again, but it's clear that he can see his future at Chelsea. Um, and so, you know, it, it's a shame, though. Uh, I do agree because, you know, we we could have... I feel like he really could have done a job, especially if we, we were planning on switching to having more of a lone DM. He really could have played a role there, even in the cup games or something like that. But I guess maybe he'll get more game time out in Spezia and, you know, maybe that's more important for his development, in which case, you know, all the best to him. Yeah, no, yeah, definitely for sure. I think it, I think it makes sense. I mean, a few things in the chat. By the way, guys, not mentioned it so far today. Keep smashing the likes on the stream. Let's get those likes up. Um, really helps helps me out. And also, guys, if you're tuning in now and you're not subscribed to the channel, please do click that subscribe button. We're heading towards 2K subscribers at the moment. We're well over halfway there. So yeah, if you could subscribe to the channel, you haven't done so already, that would be greatly appreciated. Um. In the chat here, uh, can we bring in a new goalkeeper? I mean, we're not going to bring in a new goalkeeper, obviously. But, I mean, Chelsea Database, I'll come to you first on this one. Do you think Chelsea, to be taken seriously and to win a Premier League title, which is what we want to get back to, do you think we need an upgrade on Edouard Mendy? Um, yeah, I mean, he, uh, like I said before, he's good right now. But if we want to, like, progress in the future, we need a keeper that can distribute the ball, especially when we're trying to play possession football, uh, you know, Mendy with the ball on his feet is just it's, it's not like, it's not good. It's not it, it's not good. Like oh my days. And and uh, also he's like he's, he's saving especially in the near post. He's, he's, his form has gone down. I'm I'm not hopefully he can bring that back up to what we know he did uh last season. Um but yeah, I I think in the future uh, a new goalkeeper but I think right now it's not a priority. Uh, we obviously have that Gabriel Salina coming in yeah. in January. Uh, when his loan finishes, so maybe we might see him. You got um, the uh, the youngster Beach as well, who we signed at the start of the window. Yeah, yeah. There's a few in there. I mean, Ollie, Ollie, what are your thoughts on Mendy? I mean, for me, I think he's done well when he's come in. Since he's come in, there's been a few patchy. There's been a few form issues towards the back end of last season. Preseason wasn't great. There's been a couple of obvious errors, notably at Leeds this season. I mean, people say he was potentially at fault for goals against Leeds and uh, sorry, goals against uh, Leicester and Southampton as well. Um, I mean, for me, I think for the time being, he probably is good enough. But I think if we're going to take that next step and challenge for the Premier League, we've been blessed with the likes of Petr Cech, Thibaut Courtois. I mean, we want we wanted someone like an Allison. I think remember under Surrey, we were we leaked with Allison. We couldn't quite get it done. We, we we need a goalkeeper that's kind of good with the ball at his feet. Mendy does not tick those good with the ball at the feet boxes, but. And what are your thoughts on them now? And do you think, like myself and Joe's database, that if we're going to challenge for the title, we probably need to upgrade the goalkeeping position? I think um, his confidence is really low. And I think mm. it's been really low ever since, actually, he won the Africa Cup of Nations. I'm not sure what exactly happened. Maybe he felt he had nothing left to prove. And so from there, it's kind of gone downhill for him. But um, he's done... He's done very, very well for us, and we can't discount what he has done. But it's um, it's absolutely fair to say that his form at the moment hasn't been good enough. We all know he wasn't very good with his feet, and the thing is, is he was he's been very poor with his feet for a long time. Because you know, how many times last season did we see with you know where he made a wayward pass, or you know, ended up passing it directly to the striker, or went out for a throw in like really close to the corner flag or whatever, you know. We know he's not good with the ball at his feet. So in a way, it's a bit confusing that we continue to actually play the style that we requires him to play with his feet so much. Um, I think the difference is, is people have kind of realised that he's poor with his feet and now other teams are targeting him, um, you know, with a really high press and making sure they press him because one, his confidence is low. So he's going to be, you know, shit under pressure, basically. Uh, and the other thing is, you know, that if they're targeting him, his confidence is going to be even lower. So 
it's kind of a I think it's a mix of a few things. Clearly, Mendy is an elite shot stopper, in my view, at least. But um, it seems that he just needs to have some training done with the ball at his feet. I would say after his last little run of form, I think Kepa really deserved to have a run in the team. But it seems that maybe that's not going to happen. Yeah, ma- yeah, ma- 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 maybe not. I mean, I think it's definitely not an issue for now, but I think it could be an issue for maybe next summer, potentially. I- I- I'm-, I'm not really sure, but yeah. Mendy does need to improve at his feet desperately, or we may look to bring someone else in there. I mean, boys, just want to take it onto a window, the window as a whole so far. I mean, we've we've bought in obviously uh, Kukurea, uh, Sterling, Fafana, Kulabai, Zakaria, Abamyang. It's six first team players. The pie could be a seventh. Plus, we've bought in the likes of Slanina, Omari Hutchinson, Chukwamaker. We're looking at that Arson Zach Harian guy as well. I'm not sure if that's that seems like happened. that's just been uh, blocked. That, that, that's um, just been blocked, has it? Fair. Yeah, I think because of the because uh, of the sanctions, it it makes it difficult to, to be, put the funds to, in to actually put the funds across because it ends up in the a Russian entity's account. So um, it's it's it looks like maybe that one might not be happening, but maybe if we dip back uh, dip back in in January. Okay, cool. So we bought those guys. I mean, Chelsea database. How pleased have you been with the window as a whole? We could be adding the pie to what we've already got. I mean, in terms of the first team signings, I've just reeled off Kukurea, Sterling, Kulabai, Fafana, and obviously um, Zakaria and Abamyang. Those six, I mean, if we, how, how do you assess that? Do you think that's six good signings bought in? Yeah, I, yeah, I think they're good, six good signings. You know, the big window, a lot of money spent. I think, um, you know, my only, we, you know, I would have preferred that we did all these business, uh, all, all of these signings a lot earlier and not a left like half of them at, deadline, at deadline day. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I, if I was to like rate this window, I would probably rate it an eight out of ten. Yeah, no, I, 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 I think it's a very good window. I think, in in get we obviously lost Rudiger and, and uh, Kulabai, uh, sorry, Rudiger and Christensen on freeze. We've replaced them with Fafana and Kulabai, which I think is phenomenal business. I think, arguably, that's better than what we had before, if we're being perfectly honest. And we've also brought in Wesley Fafana, who is a top, top draw defender, one for the one for now and one for the future. Kukurea is coming to provide competition for Chilwell and maybe even make that space his own, plus providing cover at left centre-back as well. We've brought in Raheem Sterling at the top end of the pitch, who's been great so far. Three goals in his last two games, adding a much-needed sort of goal scoring to the front line. Um, and then we've also added a Bamiang and Zakaria to the mix and could be adding Memphis Depay. You know, we've lost Lukaku, we've lost Werner. Um, Colin hudson doy has gone on loan. We've got Brozier back in. I mean, Oli... This window, when you look at those names he's brought in, I mean, I don't think it's possible to say that Chelsea have had a bad window. Yes, we could have wanted more, but considering we started working after everybody else, like, all things considered, I think we've done a really good job. Yeah, that's the thing. I, I, and some um, Jimmy in the in the chat has has really amplified that by saying, you know, like we, you know, you've got to remember the sanctions made it so we actually couldn't work, you know, we couldn't do any business before basically everyone and everyone else and we were all complaining that you know as of sort of like may and june because all these other teams were being able to get stuff over the line and you know even the agree fees you know weeks in advance months in advance for players and you know that's why at the start it looked like chelsea were trying to hijack lots of deals is because we were trying to catch up to everybody else um but you know it, it seems like i would say personally you know it's like you say it's hard to compare our window to anyone else's um, and I would say even comparing it to other people's, um, I would say it's a decent enough window, um, especially considering the fact that we lost um, two, you know, starting centre backs. We had to replace both of them. You know, we've lost Alonso as well. So we had to replace him as well. So we lost a lot of defence. And I think specifically Rudiger and Christensen leaving probably actually p- uh, put our progress back quite away because we couldn't get a fee for them. You know, we, we, we couldn't get anything for them. So we just had to kind of replace them out of our own pocket, um, you know, which obviously doesn't benefit us and it requires us to spend money where if we had kept them on or, you know, sold them, we could have spent money more money elsewhere. Um, so I think, it you know, Rome wasn't built in a day. We're not going to get everything done in one window. But, you know, we'll tell you what, Boley and Tuchel have really had a go. Uh, of getting it all done in one window they've done a I, in my view they've done a reasonably good job i would give it a solid seven out of ten yeah I think, I, I think i think it's done really well i mean chosen database for fauna um the big one that's coming at center back i mean i mean if you've had if you had a look at his stats what 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 can he bring to this back line that kind of we haven't got and do you see him complimenting kulabai and tiago silver in, in that first choice back three nicely who was yeah. for fauna yeah for fauna mate yeah 
Yeah, um, he is a uh, is is top talent. You know, we 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 all saw the seat though, uh, the pre the, the the season before last season, um, mm. how well he did. Um, obviously the injury is uh, um kind of set him back. Well, um, hopefully he, that shouldn't really worry. That shouldn't really affect his performances in the future. Um, I think it's it's all fine. Mm. Uh, but yeah, in terms of like him as a player himself, you know, he he's an aggressive player. I think Rogers. Um, uh, Brendan Rodgers uh, said like in a press conference um, that he's a uh, he, he's a top quality player. Like he's really aggressive. He likes to bring the ball forward. His reading of the game is pretty good. Um, he wins his tackles. You know, physically he's really good as well. You know, in the air, and it's like his strength. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm excited. Uh, a lot of money. Um, so I want I, 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 I wonder if um, like the pressure of the price tag is on his shoulders and if that would affect his performances. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting. I mean, the, the key thing that Chelsea were desperate for was to not have him to be the world's most expensive defender. We've done that. I think 69.2 million pounds uh, is, 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 is the upfront fee with, I think it might go to 75 with add-ons. Uh, I don't know how attainable those add-ons are and whatnot. But I mean, Oli, how pleased are you with Fafana and how do you see him complementing the likes of Silver and Kulabai in that in that first choice back three, it would seem. Plus, also with Silva probably moving on at the end of this season, potentially, you know, we've got someone ready made to step in and, and, and be our top centre back for the next five, six years. Yeah, he, he's an absolutely phenomenal young talent. He's um, he's really, really, really good. Um, you know, I think a lot of people have reservations because of how, you know, he was uh, with because of his, his injury and the fact that he just signed a big contract and things like that. But he's done really, really well. Um, I'm very, very, uh, I'm, you know, since coming back from injury, he's played, he's played well. Um, we all know there's a really good player in there and there's a really, really good uh, option for him to become the main man at the back at Chelsea. You know, Silva, like you say, is probably going to be moving on after this season, maybe going back to Brazil or doing something. I don't know. Um, but you've got Koulibaly, who's no spring chicken either. You know, he's, he's what, 31, 32, something, 34 even, something like that. He's not young. And so um, after his contract is over, you know, we're going to have the likes of a few young centre-backs who are just entering sort of like their their young prime, as it were, you know, sort of 24, 25. It's the right chance. It's the right time for Chelsea to bring in someone like him. Um, and I'm just really glad we went and got it done because he seems like he's going to be a phenomenal player for us. Yeah, no, he, he definitely has. I mean, uh, what we've got, let me just get to a few things in the chat. I mean, Cy Phillips is... Uh, yeah, I'm just about to say that as well. Apparently, Memphis Depay mm -hmm. is, is underway. I don't. I mean, that's obviously a Spanish source, but I mean, Simon Phillips is pretty well. He's been pretty spot on. He must like trust these guys he's following. So, sounds like Memphis Depay to Chelsea could be could be happening. Could be underway. Um, Joe D. Boy, I'd, love, I'd like to know what you think by our last three. Do you mean Fafana, Abamyang, and Zakaria, or do you mean Abamyang, Zakaria, and potentially Depay? Let, let me know. But I think they're pretty decent signings. In all fairness. Um, did Gordon come to Chelsea? No, he didn't. Uh, too much of a valuation between the clubs. Chelsea not valuing at, at valuing him at more than 40 mil. Everton wanting the 60, so no deal there. Didn't Lampard say he was worth 100 million? Yeah, Lampard said he was worth 100 <laughs> mil. But, but Lamp, Lampard, Lampard being, the, being the Chelsea legend he is, he's doing us a favour knowing that you know Gordon's not quite good enough. Say he's worth 100 mil, that'll, 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 that'll sort him out. Um, the pie is dangerous happening. game of chicken to play. Bowley might it have is. paid it. <laughs> <laughs> the, the pie is happening. It's mainly Spanish sources reporting that. I mean, Oli, out of the summer signings we've made so far, mate, who's impressed you the most? Because I think you could probably say, and what's been a disappointing start to the season, to put it lightly, that Sterling and Kukurea have probably been two of our standout players this season, potentially our two best players this season, other than other than Thiago Silva specifically Sterling has really impressed me, but we all knew he was going to be good. It was just about how good was he going to be? We were all questioning, is he going to be able to get the same number of chances and play in the same way that he did under, under Pep at Man City? And he seems to have gotten off to an absolutely flying start. Um, and I'm very, very pleased we have someone of his calibre and his leadership um, in the squad, because I think it will really, uh, it will really be, he'll, he's, got, he's a very strong dressing room presence. We know this from his time at, uh, Man City, and we also know it from his time in England. And um, I hear, you know, him and Reese James have been really stepping. Like Reese James specifically has really been stepping up in his leadership roles inside the uh, inside the squad recently, inside the dressing room. So you know, and that was one thing that I think, especially last season, you could have a look at at times and say Chelsea don't actually have that many natural leaders. You know, as much no. as we like Aspilicueta. And he's he's a decent captain. He's not much of a leader, really. And you could say the same about Jorginho, our vice captain. You could say the same about a lot of our players. But um, having someone like Sterling, who's got that intangible leadership quality, 
um, is really, really important. And, and you know, the quality he, he brings us on the ball. He scored an absolutely phenomenal goal against uh, South... Uh, was it Southampton? No, it was against... No. Um, Spurs was it his uh no, well no against um he scored two against Leicester Leicester that was it yeah he scored an absolutely phenomenal goal against Leicester his first one um where he sort of like chipped it over the keeper that's the sort of quality you know he's going to be you know getting goals by himself winning games by himself for us and that's really important you know because it means not only has he got leadership he can back up what he says on the pitch yeah no 100% I mean Joe Stateway Sterling's obviously been one of the standout performers how impressed have you been with Mark Correa as well coming in because I think the biggest compliment I compare, and I've said it before on the channel, is that no one's really talking about missing Ben Chilwell. And I think mm. that's that's kind of a, that's kind of a, 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 a the biggest compliment we can give him. I think he's come in, he's done so well. He, he's already a fan favourite. Um, he's aggressive. He gets up and down the pitch. He's already got a couple of assists. Um, how impressed have you been with him? Yeah, I, I think he's been great. And I think Chilwell's got a lot of work to do if he wants to really get back into the yeah. starting eleven. Um, you know, his ability to create chances. He's already got two assists. Um, already um, in his record at Chelsea. So, you know, that Saledi more assist than he had uh, at Brighton. So it, yeah, he's it, already it, done it. More assist yes. than he got at Brighton, yeah. So, you know, the fullback pairing of Reese James and Mark Crickwell, you know, we're, we're going to be cooking, you know, creativity-wise, that's going to be great. Um, I like the option of Cucurella slipping into um, to left centre-back as well and allowing Chilwell to bomb on depending on what we need. Um, you know, because I think yeah. I think Chilwell might actually be a better striker of the ball and a better finisher than Cucurella, but yeah, Cucurella's yeah. definitely got the uh, the creativity and things like that that yeah. we do need down that left hand side. Yeah. So depending on what we need, you know, he's a really versatile player. I'm very pleased we have him in the squad. Yeah, no, I think we I'll... saw that in. Um, oh, um, on, I think we saw that in like uh, Southampton. Um, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. He moved Cucurella like left centre back, and Chilwell came on, and he was like more forward, and then like Cucurella's like creating from deep. So, you know, that's obviously that sort of like marauding yeah. Rudiger centre back thing that Rudiger used yeah. to do. Yeah, really pleased. Uh, you know, very, very happy with the role he plays for us. Um, and um, it's so nice to see uh, us bring in a player who's actually performing straight away, um, you know, rather than. We've we've had a lot of misses in the transfer window in the last you know few few seasons, and we've had a lot of ones where it's you know you got to sort of eke them on a bit and wait for them to adapt and wait for them to gel and all the rest of it. And it's so refreshing to have someone like Cucurella who comes in straight away and and just performs and just does his job. Hundred percent, boys. I was I was meant to touch on this earlier, um, but I kind of kind of forgot about it. And I've been reminded of it now uh, whilst we've been going. What did you boys make of the? Before the Southampton game on uh, on Tuesday night, I mean Chelsea. Day, I guess, I'll come to you first. That the news that Fabrizio broke that Chelsea were in advanced talks with RB Leipzig over a deal for Josko Gavardio, ninety million euros, um, and he would join it in in twenty twenty three. So next summer, um, obviously, it's now subsequently transpired that Gavardio has extended his contract with RB Leipzig until June twenty twenty seven. But supposedly talks are going to continue for Gavardio to Chelsea in January. I mean, what, what did you make of all this? Because I thought it was quite odd because we've been trying for Gavardio for a while. You know, we very much thought it was off limits. And then bang, before the Southampton game, we suddenly got this big news. We're all excited. Gavardio's happening. It's happening. And then he's the next day he signs a new contract and they're going to try again in, 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 uh, in January. Yet, if he signed a new contract and our 90 million euros bid got rejected, surely it's going to cost more than 90 million to get him it will be talks. putting in. It will be putting mm. in a very big release clause in his contract. Sure, well, that, well, that's no, the only thing I can think. Yeah, of. I mean, apparently though, mate, there's no. According to German sources I've seen on Twitter, there's no release clause in the contract, <laughs> which God. which which is a bit odd. But I mean, Chelsea database. What, what did you make of all this news? Um, yeah, I thought I thought it was pretty odd as well because um, he would have to go back. So we're basically shopping for next summer when this summer wasn't even finished. So you know, I. I I, I do rate the player though. I, I think he's a fantastic player. Like, I think he's like if he was to come in, he would do a really good job at left centre back, um, kind of being that like uh, marauding forward, like, like Rudiger, like uh, playing vertical passes forward. You know, this guy is incredible. But um, it, it, it's a lot of money as well, and it's a, it's a lot of money that we're spending for someone. That, yeah, for someone that's not going to come in straight away, he's going to come in next summer. Um, but yeah, um, I, I'll be interested to see what the release clause is if there is one uh, in January when maybe talks begin again. But obviously Tuchel is a fan of this guy. Um, you know, we were the first we were first linked to him in, at the uh, very start of the window. Mm. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, it's an, an interesting one. I mean, I'm a big fan of him. I mean, it would be quite something to have like Fafana, Gavardio, Kulabai, Kukurea filling in there, Thiago Silva still potentially. 
I mean, we, we, we would be we would have two of probably the best young defenders in world football and Gavardiola and Fafana in our back three if he were to join. But I Least mean, of all, remember Levy Colwell will still be part oh, of the Colwell will well. still be there. We've still got Chalabar as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, yeah. there's plenty of options there. But I mean, Oli, what did you make of this news? Because it was, as Chelsea Database has said, you know, it, it was slightly odd. It comes out before the Southampton game. We're all well excited, you know, getting carried away as you do in being a football fan when a, when a big name's linked to your club. And then they sign a new contract, five years. Um, I think it's a one-year extension to the current deal. I mean, we, 90 million euro bid turned down, and then we're going to try again in January. I mean, what have you made of all this? Because it, it it's a little bit odd, isn't it? I mean, we've, we've been trying to get Gavardio for a while. It's not been possible. Um, Leipzig made that very clear. Um, and then you get the news that you think, oh, it could be possible. Now he signs a new contract, and they're going to shelve talks until January. I mean, what have you made of the whole situation? Do you think Chelsea needs Gavardio? Um possibly not um and and the reason i say that is because well i think the thing is is if you look at the chelsea center backs that we've got and the chelsea center backs we've potentially got coming in as well um obviously he would still be an upgrade because he would be an excellent player um but you look at someone like chalaba who was this close to leaving and going to inter on loan this season perhaps tuchel doesn't fully rate him um, that would be, and you know, he's been, and several times we've had Reese James playing right centre back over him. So, you know, I, what it says to me, there's a few things it says to me is that one is uh, Tuchel still wouldn't be happy with the defence, which is, you know, probably uh, just a him problem, really. Um, and the other thing being is that we'd probably be planning on sticking with a back three for the foreseeable mm -hmm. um, because you can't have the likes of Fafana, Gvardiol, Colwell. Um, Chalaba, uh, Koulibaly, all yeah. in all in the same squad, and only play two centre backs, um, just because nobody there'll be at least one player, if not two, or possibly even three, who are unhappy with the minutes they're getting. Um, so, I don't know. It it seems like a bit of a strange one. It's certainly not where I would have priori prioritized. Um, you know, our transfer our transfer kitty going after we'd already signed two centre backs to sign a third. Um, but you know, at the same time. Uh, maybe there's a recognition that someone like Aspi or Chalaba, or, you know, who both do cover, fill in at centre back at times, or you know, might actually be going at some point somewhere else. So maybe they're trying to hedge their bets before the market knows that Chelsea need a centre back, and then that point, Guardiola would be hyper expensive, not just super. I mean, expensive, I, I mean, I, I mean, I, I do rate the fact that we're trying to get business done early and planning ahead. It's something that we've been banging on about to happen for ages, and something we've not done under the previous regimes. So getting Guardiola done even if it's to come next summer to get one of the most in-demand players on the market because next summer he certainly will be with Thiago Silva most likely moving on it would be someone that can slot straight in have a full pre-season and get fully up and running for next season it would it, it, it would make a lot of sense but I mean Chelsea State Base what do you think it would mean though for the likes of you know Colwell who's on loan at Brighton uh, uh, Trevor Chalaber who's actually stayed at the club the club wanted him to stay um, seeing Chelsea potentially signing Gavardio for next summer. I mean, what, what does that do for their chance? And how does that make them feel? Yes, you know, you want competition for places, but, you know, when you see we've just bought Fafana in for big money and then Gavardio could potentially probably cost more money than Fafana did. I mean, Colwell and Chalaba must be having kind of second thoughts when they see this. Yeah, I think I think also most likely Chalaba, since he's the old, he's actually older than uh, Fafana and Gavardio. So if, if we do yeah. end up getting him. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's obviously it's good competition to have. Um, you know, we don't want to, we don't, we don't want to just have like an A team and then like a really crap B team. We want to have like a good A, a and B team. Um, you know, like C with their squad depth. That like if what if one gets injured, it doesn't matter. We have another quality player that can fill in and do mm. a really good job. Um, but yeah, I mean, signing. I, I I understand signing two young players as well as and then having like, um, you know, two other young players as well at the club ready. Um, you know, that that's kind of like cause a little bit of um uh kind of cause a little bit of trouble with the whole mm. like game time um yeah. you know you know obviously these guys they're they, they're young hungry players they want to prove themselves they want up their career they obviously want to play you know and they don't no one's going to want to be holding the bench um then again um, there will so, be yeah. enough you know uh, for you know if you're playing three center backs you can have five first team level center backs yeah for sure yeah because mm. you know th there's going to be enough enough places for everybody you know, because this season is long, you know, most games Chelsea play between 50 and 60 odd games, you know, depending on how far we go in some of our other competitions. So the other thing that you could see from Guardiola is you could already be seeing a natural succession plan already for Koulibaly, 
who maybe in a couple seasons might not be quite, you know, quite the same player. He's already, you know, in his 30s and, you know, maybe at some point he starts to decline and maybe there's a good idea for like a natural succession um, already underway there, which would be which would, would be excellent squad planning and also perhaps wishful thinking. <laughs> yeah, true. But I mean, Oli, would you, would you agree with the trail of thought that with... The, with the, with the centre backs, particularly, probably being one of the least rotated positions on the pitch, that by yes, you want quality and you want strength in depth, but that then brings issues in itself because these top players want to play regularly. But when you've only got sort of two or three slots and you might have to have a Gavardiola or a Kulabai or whatnot on the bench, that creates problems in itself as well. How to manage big personalities that want minutes but aren't getting them? Well, I think that is partially mitigated by the fact we have five subs now. Yeah. Uh, you know, the fact that actually more players will be able to get more minutes more often, um, you know, so I, I've, I feel like from, from that from that side of things, you know, maybe actually some players go, actually, I'd rather, you know, develop and train at Chelsea and spend some time on the bench and also get some minutes in playing with these top, top players instead of playing all the time. Uh, you know, whatever the right uh, approach is to take, you know, we don't know, but that might be the way they're seeing things. And, and you know, if Chelsea can convince Gvardiol to come, I mean, our, our defence will be stacked. I'll be thrilled. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 I mean, it would be great. I mean, Fabrizio Romano saying that at the moment, Memphis Depay to Chelsea is not close, but again, that, that could change. We, we don't really know too much what's going on there. Um, but I mean... I don't know, Chelsea database, in terms of the signings we've brought in so far, the six names we've mentioned, I mean, how do you think Chelsea would line up now? Do you very much think we go with kind of how we were, but Aubameyang would probably rotate with Havertz and, and you know, Zakaria would start sometimes, but kind of rotate. I mean, it doesn't really, it adds more depth and, and more competition for places, but do you think it improves the quality of the side? Um. Yeah, I think I think you know Aubameyang is definitely a definite upgrade on Havertz. You know, Havertz yeah. is he's not a, he's not a striker, he's not a goal scorer. Um, so, you know, having someone like Aubameyang um, will improve us in that aspect. Uh, I'm not too sure about Zakara if he'll be an upgrade. You know, he'd be an upgrade to like Jorginho, but it would be an upgrade to like conversation Kante. I don't know, but um, at least we do know that um, um, that if Kante and Kovacic are injured, you know, Zakara can fill in and he'll be fine. That's yeah, the thing. I'm, I think you've got to look at it relative to outgoings as well. You know, if you said at the start of the window, I'll swap you, uh, I'll swap you Zakaria for uh, Zakaria on loan for Barkley leaving, I'd have bitten your hand off. Oh, of course. You know, so yeah. you've got to look at it actually in in you know, especially, and that's why we were saying uh, earlier that the outgoings were so important because actually, when you look at it, you can't just look at the players we brought in. You've got to look at the players they're replacing a lot of the time. If we're bringing them in for depth. You know, remember when we had, you know, the likes of Barkley and Saul and things like that on the bench? As if options, we don't, it was poor. As options. <laughs> Those were dark days, it? mate. Dark days. It is. But then if you look at that bench instead and you see someone like Gvardiol and you see, you know, Zakaria and you see whoever, you know, who's actually that level above, who is a first team quality player. That, you know, that's something that means we can actually rely on our, rely on our bench a lot more. Uh, which is really important when we play so many games in a season. Yeah, I think a strong bench is actually really important. You only have to look at the... I know we had injuries and we hadn't brought our players in, but you only have to look at the bench on Southampton on Tuesday night and there's not, there weren't a lot of options on there at all. Yeah. I mean, talk, just talking about the bench Chelsea database, how surprised are you? I mean, how, how would you feel about the fact that we've kept Hakim Ziyech and we've kept Christian Pulisic? Ziyech obviously wanted that move to Ajax. It didn't happen. He obviously got on the plane from straight after the Leeds defeat in which he played and flew out to Amsterdam to try and negotiate a move. Christian Pulisic, it's clear that he does not want to be here. A loan move was blocked earlier in the window for him. Um, he doesn't want to be. He can tell his body language is off. You know, is there anyone not to clap the fans after the, the defeat at Southampton on Tuesday? Read into that what you will. Um, mate, you, you obviously you do not want players in the dressing room that don't want to be at the club. I know it's, we kind of haven't got enough time to bring replacements in, but what do you feel the dynamics going to be around kind of the dressing room and stuff with the, with, with the likes of Ziyech and Pulisic still here, who they're going to have to use them at points in the season, and yet they don't want to be here. Yeah, I mean, I mean, they'll get their game time for sure. Like you know, they'll be off the, they'll come off the bench, play our backup games, maybe in the in the Champions League games. But you know, we we can't sort every single position at all in one window. You know, yeah. like you know, Werner left, Lukaku left, you know, even Hudson the Doy's gone as well on loan. Um, you know, if you also if you went ahead and got rid of Pulisic and Ziyech, then who else we have left in attack? We, we like, you know, we there's not many options there. So, 
and and those guys are actually pure wingers as well. So, you know, if you got rid of them, then we they are only pure wingers to Raheem Sterling. So, you know, you know, in in terms of like just having them in within the squad, just gives Tuchel another tactical option to use. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, just a quick update before we get all these thoughts on that. Uh, Memphis Depay's camp continues to work on his exit from Barca. Depay would be keen on the move to Chelsea, but from Chelsea's side, as of now, they feel it's unlikely. It's a difficult deal to do, but never, never say never in football. Never say never with Chelsea, and never say never with Todd Bowley. It could be another, it could be another wonderful meal around eleven o'clock tonight if uh, if Memphis Depay does sign. And also, guys. Still plenty of you tuning in. Please keep smashing those likes. Get those likes up. And more importantly as well, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already yet. We'd really appreciate your support. We're heading towards 2K, so please do subscribe if you haven't done so already. Ollie, I just wanted to get your thoughts on that, mate. Um, I want to start with Christian Pulisic. Obviously, came in for big money. Undoubted talent. Has showed glimpses at Chelsea. It hasn't really worked out. It's clear now that he does not want to be at the club. Um, A lone move was blocked, which I think he's a little bit pissed off about. Um... You never want players that don't want to be here. Do you just think it's a case of the fact that we kind of left it too late and he kind of has to stay because we we just don't have enough squad depth in those areas? I mean, how would you have handled that situation? And what do you make of the kind of the scenario that Pulisic finds himself in at Chelsea? I think it's difficult. Obviously, he's not happy. It doesn't help that he's got his dad spouting off on Twitter all day either. <laughs> uh, you know, no. it, he's. It, but to be honest. It, I, I have a I have had a lot of patience for for Pulisic, and I feel like he's he's had some good moments for us, and he's done well at times as well. He's probably not quite lived up to the fee we paid for him, but that's football. Um, but the thing that I struggle to reconcile with him is his attitude stinks. His attitude is really really poor. Um, not just um, not clapping the fans, you know. Obviously, that's not a good thing to do. But you know, if you're pissed off after a game. I guess, you know, you just walk down the tunnel, whatever. It happens. Um, but I find that his attitude is really, really, really poor. And actually, it's a theme at Chelsea in terms of like some of the other players. I think their attitudes have been really poor, that they've been linked away um, as well. You know, you see uh, the what, the example I keep coming back to is someone like uh, Bernardo Silva was looking mm. at leaving Man City. Um, you know, he wasn't happy for a while last season. He was on the fringes and things like that. But he never let the let um, the fact that he was going to be on the fringes affect his performance. He never let the fact that he might be leaving affect his performance. And he never let it affect his attitude. And that's that as a professional is how you should be acting as a player. Not, you know, like storming off down the tunnel and having your dad tweet all over the place and things like that. Because it just makes you look like a petulant kid. Uh, you know, and and unfortunately, that's you know that's where I'm at with Pulisic now. As far as I'm concerned, he can just, I don't know, he can he can do whatever he wants. So if he left Chelsea tomorrow and we ripped up his contract, I couldn't care less. Yeah, I think it's got to the point now where there's it's not bad blood between the fans and him, but it's got to the point now where it's it's. It's not really working out at all. He clearly doesn't want to be here. He's not going to get the minutes he wants. I mean, play, look, I, I do have a degree of sympathy for him. When when you see Tuchel cool starting Mount and Havertz week in, week out, where in the first five games, no goals and no assists between them, playing really badly, and you're Christian Pulisic, and you're thinking, what do I have to do to get a game here? When, you know, that's where I think having favourites is detrimental, because it doesn't seem to matter how well how badly Mount and Havertz play, they're always picked. So I think that puts Pulisic in a different position. And when he does get opportunities, yes, he's not always made the most of them, but to chuck him on at right wing back, which is not where he plays, is... You see, the other thing, that's the other thing, though, that I, I personally, I have to disagree with you, Charlie, yeah. because you got to remember is that the wing backs are actually the most attacking members yeah, of our true. team. Yeah, in no, the they squad, are. they're the most important members of the squad. Putting on a player at right wing back is the equivalent of saying, I trust you, go do something. You know, yeah, possibly. Uh, uh, and so, you know, when, and let's be honest, our, our wing backs aren't really defensive. They're not really, like, there's nothing really wing back about them. They're just wingers, really, that mm. also defend sometimes, you know. So it's not like he's hampered by the position. And, and saying he's playing at right wing back is probably more of a disservice to actually what he, what he, what his role is on the pitch when he is playing there, you yeah. know. It, and so, you know, like, especially, but I can, I can see where he's coming from in terms of, you know, like as many as he's fighting for minutes and he's not getting anything. He's thinking, geez, what have I got to do? Um, but at the same time, if your attitude stinks, you won't get picked. That's how yeah, it works. No, you think, don't work think, hard and your attitude yeah. sucks. You won't get picked. It's not like he deserves necessarily with his performances. He doesn't really like deserve a start. You know, I thought the American dream was supposed to be pull yourself up by your bootstraps and earn it yourself, not wait for other mm. people to struggle. So, you know, and then, 
you know, usurp their position. No, that's not, you know, that wouldn't have been what he was taught as a kid either. So, you know, in my view, like everyone in the squad, he's got to earn it. And he shouldn't be gifted yeah. anything. And and no. in my view, it, it's coming across a little bit entitled. Yeah, no, I think so. I mean, Trust database, what do you think of what Jason said here? Obviously, we know in Pulisic 1920 was decent. Um, do you think he needs to be given a consistent run of games like a Mount has, like a Havertz has, five, six days games in a row to try and show what he can do? We saw it with Callum Hudson and Doy last season towards around this time, actually, where we had big injury problems and Callum played sort of started seven, eight games on the spin um and, and played some really good football. I mean, do you think Pulisic deserves a chance like that? Or do you just think now it's kind of like he needs to knuckle down, earn his chance, make the most of the opportunity he gets, and then he might get that opportunity to do so? Yeah, well well, first of all, he needs to prove to Tuchel that um that he he's worthy of a start in training. And then once he does that, then I think he um he should at least get a consistent run of games. I mean, we we're, we're seeing habits and mount, five goals, zero goals and assists. Yeah. You know, I mean, Pudisic is probably looking at like, you know, I, <laughs> he's probably looking at and like thinking, you know, I, I think I should get, be given a go. And, you know, and, and, you know, rightfully so. But obviously he needs to show it first in training to, to call that. He has to start. And, you know, if he doesn't, if he, you know, if he, if he can't do it in training, then he's not going to be able to um, start the game. He's, he's just going to stay, stay on the bench. But, um, yeah. but yeah, but the, the, all the thing with Pudisic is that um, I, I, <laughs> he, I think my, I think his problem, in my opinion, is that Sterling is in this position because uh, Pulisic is kind of like a goal-scoring forward. Like he's mm. he's not really a creator. He's, he kind of like makes like he's he's good at um, making runs into the box and like getting getting on the end of like uh, crosses or passes and you know trying to score. You know, and, and that's what we have Sterling for. So obviously he would obviously have to try and display Sterling, which I don't think he would be able to do. Um, so he's in a tricky position, but he, he just has to work for it. Yeah, no, I think I think that I think that's a fair I think it's a fair point. Um, Ollie, what do you think of quickly on the future of Hakim Ziyech? I mean, undoubtedly a talented boy. He wanted that move to Ajax. Doesn't look like it's going to happen now. I mean, time's virtually running out. I mean, you never say never, but it looks like he's going to stay. Um, how pleased are you to still have him around? And do you think he can be useful this season? Absolutely. Uh, you know, I I think there's certainly a chance for him. I know he's currently not really happy in the Chelsea squad and ideally you get rid of all the happy uh, unhappy players um, but if you get rid of a player every time they're unhappy you don't end up with any players left um, so I think if you've got if you're going to have a player like Ziyech you may as well utilize him and partially actually signing someone like Zakaria going back to this again that allows us to possibly play with a four at the back and actually use Ziyech as more of a traditional creative winger might actually really help us um, and that certainly gives him a, an option, you know, as being the the point to play, especially if you've got someone like Reese James who can cross really well, um, Ziyech who can cross really well, crossing to a natural poacher like Aubameyang, you know, you've really got the you've got the building blocks there for an, actually a very strong partnership and a good way to and a consistent way to score goals. Um, so, so I feel like someone like Ziyech could definitely see a run in the team. It's just about whether he actually gets picked or not. Um, you know, you've got. Abamyang and Sterling at the moment. Abamyang, I imagine, would come in and straight in when he is fit and is going to take up one of those starting places on across the front three. You know, Mount usually takes one of them as well, and Sterling usually takes the other one. So it does leave the question about saying, you know, like where does he actually fit within that three at the front? But at the same time, you know, like we say, long season, five subs, lots of opportunities for minutes. It's just about whether he's satisfied about not having as many minutes and not being, uh, you know, the main man like he was at Ajax, which I think is partially the reason he wanted to go back. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's an interesting one. I think he has, a, he, he has a role to play. It's about whether Tuchel rates him enough to play it and if he rates himself enough to play it. Yeah, no, I, I think that's fair. I mean, boys, just before we come on to just round out, guys, keep smashing the likes. Almost 100 of us in here now, so keep smashing those likes. Get those likes up, and please do subscribe to the channel as well if you haven't done so already. Would really appreciate it. And do follow my two wonderful guests as well. Their Twitter handles are both on the screen there, so drop them a follow for some great football content and all things Chelsea. I mean, guys, I just wanted to round out with a little bit of talk about the future signings that Chelsea have made in terms of the likes of your Chukwa makers, your Slaninas, your Amari Hutchinsons. I mean, Chelsea Davis, how pleased are you, mate, to see that not only are we improving the first team, but we're also planning for the future so that when players do move on, we've got kind of ready-made replacements already in there. I mean, how pleased do you see us to kind of take that approach? There's not an approach that we're sort of used to seeing, really. Yeah, um, 
I, I, I'm glad we're doing that because you know we're, we're getting the uh, we're getting the young talents in, we're getting them in early, and then you know obviously we have got, we've got a good academy, we've got a good structure with Neil Bath. You know he, he'll be able to develop them, make them into really good players. Um, so yeah, it's it's good that we're getting the uh, the wonder kids in the world. Um, it's better, you know, be- it's it's a lot better than us having to buy them in the future when they're like a hundred million. So if we can get them in now, you know, it's it's perfect. But I, yeah. I, 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 I I'm kind of concerned because um, like if you look at the midfield like Chucky um Carnes, I can't really say his second name. Yeah. And um, that Casaday, they're two. Oh, eight, I forgot they're about him. Yeah. Yeah, they're two number eights, and we don't play with number eight, so it's 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 kind of a weird one um, that we're buying those. But you know, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, at the end of the day, I think it works twofold as well. You know, you buy these guys relatively cheaply, you train them up, and even if they don't end up quite being good enough for the Chelsea first team, I'm sure they can make very good players to play elsewhere in the Premier League or at a top level in other leagues. You can sell them on for for, for a sizable profit as well. So it works twofold. You can either get players in on the cheap, develop them, and then you've done really well and your first team sorted out, or you can sell them on for profit. I mean, Ollie, what, what, what have you made of, of us signing up, of, our signings of young talents? You know, as I was saying to database, you know, it's not really something we've seen too much of Chelsea, particularly under Roman Abramovich, who was always very much ready-made superstars. But I think it's refreshing to see us buying young talent as well. Um, what have you made yeah, of the deals like, for the likes of Selena, um, you know, Hutchinson, I think they're, uh, I think they're Cassidy, good choices. Et I, yeah. I, you know, I think they're good choices. I, I have a theory about how this is how this is actually happening. You know, obviously, you know, we we don't technically tend to buy, uh, you, like you say, we we don't tend to buy uh, youth talent. We tend to either you know sign them for a really low fee when they're really young, or develop them ourselves, um, or you know sign a big player once they've you know got more more they've had more potential, they've proved themselves a little bit, and we're going in that sort of in between stage now. Where we're signing, you know, proven youngsters, you know, as it were, who are, you know, like the next generation of of the greatest players. And my my theory about why we're doing this is because, um, if you look at Todd Bowley and you look at the uh, the way that they do the youth setup in American sports, like in baseball, um, usually there's a cap onto how many, um, you know, youngsters can be signed. There's a cap to like how, uh, you know, how much money you can spend on on play, like young players like that, and Bowley's come into football where really those caps aren't really a thing. And he's seen it, looked around and gone, you mean I can just buy all of the best young talent, <laughs> you know, and I can buy, you know, I can buy all the best young talent I want and all I have to do is just buy them and that's it. And then they're part of the club for the future. Wow. That sounds really easy. And then he's gone and done it. Um, especially with him being under Neil, you know, having Neil Barth as like really a driving force, essentially our, our who is essentially becoming our director of football, uh, it seems, um, at the moment for the youngsters. Uh, it seems like it's a really good strategy for Chelsea for the future. Um, whether it turns out to, uh, you know, whether the players end up being in the first team or whether they end up being sold on. Actually, you know, there's a there's a reasonable amount of understanding and, and logic in in buying youngsters for, say, 10, 15, 20 million. If you can reliably indicate that they're going to be 30 million, 40 million, 60, 70 million pound players further down the line. And a lot of these players will be, you know, I think we've had a lot of players come through the uh, the Chelsea Academy who, you know, we've had some absolute superstars um, and we've had some who aren't so good. Um, and the ones that aren't so good, we don't tend to talk about as much. Um, but I think. Uh, you know, especially the fact our our young, you know, our young players had really sort of been uh, eaten into, um, especially in the last couple of seasons where we were bringing in youngsters into the first team squad. And we needed to actually rebuild that a little bit as well. Uh, you know, I, I don't know if you remember our under 23s almost got relegated last season, yeah. survived and stayed up on the final day of the season. Um, so, you know, bringing in players like Cassidy and Chuck Wameka and actually giving them consistent minutes in the youth setup and as well as bringing them into the the, uh, the first team when the time is right seems like a really good strategy. And paying a bit more for that might be worth every penny. At least it is to, to Bowley. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, Ollie, you're probably best equipped for this one, mate. The Russian guys, Zach, uh, Zach Harry, and what's happened with a deal for that? Chelsea obviously paid the 15 million euro release clause. That offer went in. Uh, obviously, due to sanctions for Russia, it's kind of a difficult deal to do. Um, I heard that it might be we're just going to agree it and then we're just going to pay in 2023. Is that is that true? 
Uh, I haven't seen anything to indicate that, but um, yeah, it, it is a difficult deal. So the issue isn't necessarily the fact that, um, you know, that Chelsea are trying to do uh, business with a Russian Isn't it football a citizenship club? thing as well? They want it to be Armenian it's part- instead. Yeah. Yeah. It's partially a citizenship thing to try and work around it. It's partially uh, Britain's laws. It's partially the FA as well, um, which just basically makes it a really difficult deal to actually get done on transfer deadline day. You know, like it, it, this would have been a difficult deal at most of the time, you know, if you had weeks and months to sort out all the little, you know, kinks in, in it and things like that. But on transfer deadline day, there's almost no chance, especially considering, you know, that there are the sanctions on Russia. And the specifically, I think a lot of the issue is actually if Chelsea were to pay the money, um, what accounts it would go into and things like that and how it would actually you know how it would actually work. So this is something that we haven't actually um, come up with much in the um, in the Premier League um, in the last couple of years. You know, since or you know since Russia has invaded Ukraine, because um, we just don't have any Russian players or players from Russian teams um, since that's happened who have come into the Premier League. So this would be the first one, and I imagine it will give a little bit of a. Um, they want to treat it carefully because it's probably an indicator of how they would treat the others. Um, so it, you know, it, it, it I would say it, it's very unlikely extremely unlikely almost impossible to happen now um but it might happen in the future um yeah i i think uh that that's just about it really yeah no fair fair um yeah as channel says guys only 30 likes we can do much better than that there's been loads of people tuning in tonight so please do smash those likes guys get those likes up we'd really appreciate it and also subscribe as well i mean chelsea database just to round out mate um what uh out of kind of who are you most excited by in terms of the young players we've bought in? Is it do you think Trick the Maker's kind of the standout one for you? Um, to be honest, I've, I've never seen them play, so yeah. I, I don't really know. I, I'm probably more interested in that goalkeeper, really. Oh, Slanino, yeah, he, he, yeah, he looks good. He's the one for me, he, yeah, yeah. People really, you know, yeah, he uh, he made a save the other day, was it yesterday or today? Yeah. Um, Absolutely ridiculous save um, in the MLS, um, where he is on loan at the moment at Chicago Fire. Really excited for him. Yeah, no, he he looks good. I think mm-hmm. yeah, there's a, there's a lot of them that good, that good do that good here. Uh, someone said Maldini and Del Piero are uh, saying I watch the carrier every week. I don't understand this move from Chelsea perspective. <laughs> Technically limited, and you need more control over the game. Uh, well, I mean, I, I've, I've got to be honest, I haven't watched an awful lot of Zakaria. Um, to be fair, be t- I think low expectations could be a good thing in, in this one, though. There's not too much to expect. And to be fair, as long as he doesn't get, if he doesn't get subbed off at half time in his first two games, he's done better than Saul. So, you know, as long as he, as long as he does that, I think that's, uh, that's kind yeah. of, it That's might the most be, important thing. <laughs> there, there might be an argument for playing him in the double pivot alongside Jorginho. We know Kovar and Kav, uh, I was going to say Kovar and Kavacic. Um, uh, Kovacic and Kante are both injury prone. So it's likely they'll both be out at the same time. Um, and if you want that control over the game, who better to have next to you than, than Jorginho? Yeah, no, I think I think that's a good point as well. Just, yeah, go on, just database. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the whole Zakari thing, even if he was to, like, come off the bench and then, you know, he, he'll just help us see out the game. You know, if you were to have, like, Kante and Zakari to, just to see out the game, be defensive... You know, it's like when Mourinho like brought on um, uh, Mikel, Mikel. Mate, you know when yeah. that Mikel sub was happening, <laughs> that, that was game over. The game was done when he, Mikel, when he saw Mikel warming up on the touchline. It was finished. Yeah. So well, again, like a... with the Southampton, like you know, we go, we go, we go a goal up, and then you know we can bring those guys on, see out the game, and we we win the game. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. For sure. I mean, just a quick update before we round out on Memphis Depay, Fabrizio Romano via Chelsea transfer. Memphis Depay's lawyers are doing their best to get him out of Barcelona. So, I mean, <laughs> I mean, have we got what? I mean, we've got just under an hour and a half until until the window closes. Depay hopefully has got some half decent lawyers. Hopefully, Barca just terminate that. <laughs> hopefully Barca terminate that contract and and it's and it get and it, and, and and it gets done sort of thing. But I mean, guys, one question to finish: Ollie, will we wake up in the morning and Depay would have signed for Chelsea? Um, I'm actually gonna say I was reasonably confident until they said it was difficult, um, <laughs> and the fact that now that lawyers are involved, I would probably say probably not. Um, I would like it to be that case. Um, I would love us to be signing players left, right, and centre like Nottingham Forest are doing. Have you seen what they've done? Yeah, they've like man, twenty-five got... players this draft yeah, it's, window. It's, Absolutely, it's 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 why. honestly, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're up and Batshuayi is gone as well. I mean, if that's not yeah. a good point to round out on, I don't know what is. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah. a, cause, it's a cause for celebration. Batshuayi's gone. If Barkley's that doesn't gone. spell 
if that doesn't spell relegation is signing 25 players at once, I, I, I do it's not fair, know. I, I actually, I, I do like Forest in fairness. I think they've made I some do, good I signings. I do as well. It's I just they've got a brand new, they've got two brand new teams. <laughs> well, they've, signed a, they've signed a new squad. Yeah. But yeah, we'll, 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 we'll see what happens. Let me just get to this quickly. He's not the best. Got displaced by three youngsters who are playing youth league relegation loan and Serie B loan. The only positive is his physicality translates to the Prem. I mean, obviously not a big Zakaria fan here, but um, <laughs> we, we'll, we'll, we'll have to see what happens. But yeah, guys, we've been going for an hour and a half now. Um, Thank you to all of you that have tuned in. We're probably going to round out here. We've covered a lot of stuff and I'm not waiting up to 11 o'clock to be disappointed that the pie is not signed. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, I think we'll probably round it out here. A massive thank you to everyone that's tuned in. On your way out, guys, please do smash the likes and subscribe to the channel as well. We'd really appreciate it. Thanks for all of your support as well and for getting involved in the chat as well. A massive thank you to both my guests. Ollie, thank you so much, mate. Chelsea Database, appreciate it as always. Guys, please make sure you give these lads both a follow on Twitter. Loads of great football content and Chelsea content there as well. So please do give them a follow. Boys, thank you. It's been a pleasure. Um, guys, as I said, smash the likes on the way out. It's been a good transfer window for Chelsea. Uh, plenty of signings in. I think a record spend from us in a window. Bowley certainly made a big impression. And now let's just hope they gel and we can get back to winning ways against West Ham on Saturday. But back she wise, gone. It's fantastic news. Hopefully Memphis Depay comes in. I'll be back tomorrow with a preview for the West Ham game on Saturday. But until then, guys, take care. Up the Chelsea and pray for Memphis. See you later.